In this recording, we're going to go over the basics of building a new program. So on your Programs tab, you're going to select Add New Program. And first, we're going to start out with the Detail page. So this is where we're going to start out by naming our program. So for my example, I'm going to use Summer Camp. Now, if my summer camp runs all summer long, I can just leave this here. If my summer camp runs one week at a time or there's multiple options, I may want to add extra names either here if it's broken down by grade, or I can add to the custom program code something like which week it is if I am doing my program per week. I want to make sure that my program type is also selected. This is going to make it not only easier on your staff to find a program later, but it's also going to filter for your community. So this I'm going to put under youth. And if I had subtypes built, they would be connected right here. And I'd be able to say that this is a youth program part of this subtype. Now, drop-in support. There are three options available here. None is something where you're not going to use the check-in piece of the system to say whether or not somebody attended. Yes, pre-registration required is awesome for something like a summer camp or for any type of activity where you need them to pre-register and pay before they can attend. This pre-registration piece at attaches to the check-in piece of the system. Attendance is still secondary. Then the third drop-in is yes with no pre-registration required. This is great for internal programs that you're dropping people into, such as a $5 pool pass for those of you using check-ins and somebody does not have a pass, you can charge them $5 at entry in order for them to pay the day fee. Um, other instances of that are one-time gym fees, things along those lines. Then we have these options here, online registration. This does not need to be checked off if you want people to know about this program but not be able to register for it. Just uncheck it. That way, if it's something that maybe you are not running, but you want to be able to list the information on the calendar and have advertisement for it, such as Little League, if it is run by Little League itself and it is not run through your organization, you can always list that information here. Anything that says the word portal for an option just means it's going to show on the community end. So do you want them to be able to see this program? Do you want them to see the schedule for this program? The schedule on internal calendar matters more for staff. We don't recommend you uncheck this unless it is something along the lines of a program that you are building just to drop people into. You can update the display color per program, but please note if your program type defaults and changes this color, then you may not want to change it unless there, you are intending to override for a certain reason. And as you saw, this pops out. I just pick my new color and I hit save or choose. Allow waitlist. This just means after I hit my enrollment maximum that they will be able to put themselves on a waitlist. Enrollment begin date. This is the date that registration can begin. Enrollment end date, this is the date that online registration will end. You can also set a specific time. Please note, if this is your first time running the event within RecDesk, you may want to select a start time that overlaps with when the office is open, just so that you don't have all the spaces fill up uh, before you open for the day. You can type here for the description or here for notes. Now, notes can be slightly different than the description because you can check off this box so that information posted here is also included on the receipt. This is super useful for summer camps if you want to be able to send parents a summer camp code of conduct or something along those lines for a daily checkoff sheet. And you want to send them a hyperlink that they can click on and download and always have access to. You can post that right here in the notes. Under General Ledger account, you do want to select your General Ledger that this program's fees are going to allocate towards. If you have sales tax, make sure you add sales tax so that you can select it in the drop down. And then you have your demographic information. You can select by gender, enrollment minimum, or maximum. Remember, once the maximum is met, it will start a waitlist on the community site. You will be able to also select a grade minimum and a grade maximum 
but please keep in mind, we need to know the date that they need to be in that grade by. If this date is not selected, we cannot enforce by grade. The same can, is also true when it comes to age minimums and age maximums. Once you set the date, the, the age that you need them to be, it is very important that you select the date that they are also going to be that age or will not enforce. You also have the ability to add some custom form questions. The drop down list is a great area to ask for t shirt sizes. Remember, you are able to separate the values by semicolon. This is going to make it so that they appear in a list like this. And if it needs to be a required field, meaning you need them to respond to it, make sure that you mark that field as required. If you want to make something a default field so that if they don't select anything, it just defaults there, you can do that as well. And you can add up to 12 custom form questions. Remember, custom form questions are different than questions you're going to ask on a flex form. These questions are exportable from the roster and will pull with roster fields. Whereas the flex forms, when they export, are pulling from the, the flex form themselves and just specific custom fields from the profile. And those are the steps for creating the program detail page.